Hello, fiber friends. I am out here absolutely surrounded by brightly colored wool. Here, I'll show you. This is all the beautiful stuff that I dyed two days ago. Um, I spent the whole day in the kitchen just dyeing mostly fleece. I have a little bit of um, pull or combed top over there drying, but this is the majority of it. Um, I've got four more piles behind me. Um, I am just here. I'll show you. I am just absolutely delighted with all the progress that I made. So what I'm doing right now is. I'm taking some of the fleece. This, for example, is some of the Gotland BFL fleece that I dyed. Um, I've got three piles of it in purple, blue, and green, which if anybody knows me in person would know is my absolute favorite color combinations. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm taking it because it was on a sheep's back. There are pieces of vegetable matter or VM all throughout. And so I'm just taking this time as it's drying and then sitting out here with it um, to just pull off any pieces of debris that have that have been caught in the fleece and there's lots of it I won't get all of it right now um, but I'm trying to pick out some of the larger pieces um, since they're nice and visible against the dyed fibers. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's an absolutely beautiful day. Birds are chirping. It's early in the season, so I'm extra appreciative, I think. So yeah, I'm just going through, just pulling out little pieces of hay and other kinds of debris. You know, it all depends on what the sheep was fed and what kind of pasture it was raised in. Look, I've already got a nice little handful. And all of that is stuff I don't have to deal with in my future project. I'm pulling it out now so I don't have to deal with it later. There are just some oak leaves that fell from the tree above me that have gone intermixed. Not fallen just now, but fallen. Already fallen leaves. So my plan for this, for this fleece, is... Um, not all of what's here, but some of it is stuff that I need to spin to send to a farmer. I'm part of a group on Facebook called Spin a Pound, Get a Pound, which connects farmers who raise sheep to spinners who know how to spin fleece. Um, and it's kind of what the name sounds like. Uh, she shepherds or um, sheep farmers will post fleeces that they have that they want spun. Either they don't know how to spin or they have too much fleece and don't have time to spin. And they post it on Facebook and make it available for people to kind of say, Oh, hey, I'm interested in that. I would like to spin that fleece for you. And you kind of get a reputation depending on if you are able to finish projects or not. Um, and I have been on there for several years. I haven't been active in a while. This is the last fleece that I have from that group. Um, and it's because I love this blend. And I really like the Shepherdess. Um, so this blend is BFL, or Blue Face Blester, and Gotland. Um, which are two long wool type breeds. Um, I won't get into the specifics because I'm not an expert in that. 
but it creates these really, really lovely curly lock tips. And the shepherdess likes me to spin these in like a lock spun yarn. So I'll just take this and fluff it and then spin from that. And that makes a really, really nice textured, um, fluffy, curly, kind of crazy yarn, which is what she likes to work with, but she's not a spinner. So I'm able to kind of make that for her. So like I said, not all of this, but some of it will be heading her away. Some of it I get to save for myself because it's a spin a pound, get a pound, and some of it gets to be my pound. Um, and then behind me here, I have some of this fleece, which is a Border Lester, um, which is another longish wool. I'd call this more of a medium wool fleece. It's got a bit of a crimp to it. Um, but it's a little bit, a little bit longer than like a fine wool fleece and a little bit looser crimp. So I've got that in this kind of gray, almost lavender color, which I really, really like. And then I have this purple, which is not quite as pink as it looks on the screen. It's kind of like kind of like a wine, maybe like a, a, a maroon, not quite that red. It's hard to describe. Um, and then a little bit further back here, pardon my scoot. I have this, which was blue and black, but the black dye split and made these really cool, like brown and gray color combinations. And then the last pile is this bright blue and green. And my plan for this is to take everything except this. So this I do not have a plan for yet. It's beautiful and I'll come up with something great for it. But right now I don't have a plan what I do have a plan for is those two grays and this purple and I'm either going to card them up together or separately haven't gotten that far yet but I'm going to card them up on my drum carter maybe comb them I'll have to think about it probably carding I like carding better typically so I'm going to card these into bats and then spin them up either as like one uniform color or a couple different colors um, and then either do like a stripey or color work project or if it's all one big blend um, I'll just have a whole bunch of that yarn to do some kind of project with but I think those should go well together yeah nice purple and gray sweater vest or Something like that. I think it should be nice. But for now, I'm just going to keep picking these locks. That's what it's called, by the way, picking locks. Which is always fun when you're introducing somebody not in the fiber community to that term. I don't know. I get a kick out of that. So I'll just be picking locks, pulling VM, and admiring all of this beautiful, beautiful dyeing I've done. Before I go, I'm going to show you the other thing that I dyed. Hold on one sec. So this is a whole bunch of combed top that I dyed in a variety of purples. It's a little bit of blue, it's a little bit of pink. I was going for purples because I have this Paul Worth project that's already on the needles, which is a really pretty sweater, and it's designed by uh, Jessie May Designs. It's a test knit, so I can't show you right now, but 
I don't quite have enough yardage, I think. I think I'm gonna run out of yardage on the sleeves. So, I tied some. And at least parts of it match well enough. I think this right here is a really, really good match. This pink, not so much. I think that the pink came a little bit too bright. I needed it a little bit subtler. But this right here, this purple and blue section, I think that might be perfect. So we'll have to wait and see, do some, some sampling and some spinning and see how it looks. But I'm excited about that. I haven't, I haven't really tried to make a specific color, like match a color before. Usually I'm just throwing colors into the dye pot, having fun. I have a pretty good color sense of like what will go well together. So like this, this was purple, black, and red. And it all combined to be this. But I don't typically try to match a color and I'm really, really proud of how how well at least parts of that Paul Worth top came up. I have more than a pound there, which is more than I need, which is kind of intentional. I figured I'd have some stuff that didn't match quite as well as what I was hoping. Um, but yeah, it matches pretty well and I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, I think I'm gonna sign off for now, but I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you get outside if it's nice where you are and um happy spinning if you do that take care